let's take a look at power factor compensation of a squirrel cage machine. I have a variable power supply that I connected to 3 volt meters then going through 3 ammeters so I can see the voltage and current on each of the phases I am going to my scroll cage machine that is connected in Y I also connected that machine to 3 capacitor banks but since all of the capacitors are off right now they are not in the circuit this machine is also coupled to a 4 quadrant dynamometer that we're going to use to change the torque that is applied to the electrical machine. To monitor the mechanical parameters, I have connected my torque, the speed and analog ground into the data acquisition unit as well. To see the actual data, I need to start my data acquisition and I will need to start my main power supply. My voltage is already at 100% here, but I can change it, let's say, for example, to 80%. So let's take a look at the meters. I see I have my 4 voltmeters for my 4 voltmeters here, E1 through E4. I1 through I4 are right here. I need to start a continuous refresh. I see I'm roughly at 100 volts. E4 is not connected, so I don't have any value. And my currents are around 0.6 amps. From voltage and current, I can get the power, so I can turn any of these meters on or off. So I have roughly 37 and a half watts for the total system. These ones I don't need now. So my torque, my speed, and my mechanical power here, right now it's expecting to receive the speed from the shaft encoder that would have been right here but I connect it to the analog speed measurements. Tell that to the system. They have a negative speed because two of my wires here are actually crossed, so I'm turning counterclockwise. I will need to start the system to have an actual measurement of the speed and the torque. Right now, my machine is set as a constant torque, prime mover and brake that is adjusted to zero Newton meter so this is just to defeat the friction of the timing belt and bearings. Any of those meters, I can configure to see voltages, sum of voltages, same thing for current, for power, active, reactive, apparent power with the two or three watt meter method, efficiency, which would be my mechanical power versus my electrical power, impedance, power factor, phase shift and lots of different things. Let's look at the phase shift between E1 and I1 right now. If I turn that meter on, I see that I have minus 78 degrees. So it's close to 90 degrees because I have no mechanical load, so almost no active power into my system. You can extract the measurements from there. And if I go to 100% of my voltage here, I see that I'm at 80 degrees. If I want to see what would be, for example, the torque versus speed, I can start a data table. If I want to record my data, I first go to my record settings. And from which instruments do I want to record? Right now, all of those instruments are available, but into my metering, let's say I want to see one of the voltages might be enough. So I want the phase shift, torque. So I can take one point, just hit record, and all of the values will be ported back in. If I want to get a different torque, then I can record my next point. And I see that as I increase the torque, the speed is dropping, which is to be expected. A little bit like when you go uphill, you would expect that for the same amount of gas, or in our case, the same amount of electricity reaching the motor, you would have a drop in speed. So with that, I can create a basic graph. I can 
copy and paste into Excel if I want to. But I can also be interested into looking at what would be the data like on an oscilloscope. Once again, I need to start a continuous refresh. And I already went in and set up my input 1 to be my channel E1. So that's my voltage in yellow here. And I set my channel 2 to be I1. And I see that I have a pretty good phase shift here. Now, if I increase my mechanical load, I apply more brake. The current will become bigger. I need more current. And also it looks like it is becoming more in phase. So what is happening? It's less inductive. Well, in percentage of the total load, it's less inductive. But do the inductors really disappear in that case? It would be better to do vectorial calculations on there. Let's go back to a zero load here. Close that instrument for now. And let's take a phaser analyzer. In that case here, I have my three voltages, E1, E2, and E3. E1 at zero degree, E2 at minus 120 degrees, and E3 at 120 degrees. And my three currents. So I see that my current is 79.4 degrees. Why not 90? Because there are still some power dissipations into the copper of the machine. But let's look at the vertical part of that phase here. So I'm at 1.5 divisions. When I change the mechanical load, I change the active power. So although the vector becomes longer, its vertical part remains the same. It's the horizontal part, the active power that does change. So the power factor improves, the angle is less, but the reactive part stayed the same because the amount of magnetic field that needs to be developed in my machine remained very close to constant. So I still have that reactive power that I'm not happy with. If you are in an industry and you're having a bad power factor, they will charge you a very heavy penalty for that. Let's go back to a zero load. What I could do is that I can add capacitors in parallel to that motor. For example, if I turn on the smallest capacitor in each of these, I see that the vertical part of my vector is becoming smaller because a capacitor is in fact a positive vector. So if you add a positive value to a negative value, they cancel one another. So if I add more capacitors, I see that now when I put a full box of capacitors, my angle becomes very close to zero. I just have 11 degrees of phase shift right now. Well, the machine is totally unloaded. So 11 degrees, that might still be too much. Most machines don't run with a true zero torque load. When I increase the mechanical load, I see in fact that my total vector even becomes closer to zero degrees. So my power factor, the percentage of active power compared to the apparent power is becoming a lot better. Starting with calculations on that, it's a lot harder to understand. So I think that starting with seeing physical meaning of those vectors makes more sense. But if you go in the factory floor and say, Oh, I'm just gonna buy a hundred different capacitors and try them out until I find the value that has a nice display. Uh, you won't be taken very seriously because you're wasting the company's money. So you will need to be able to do those calculations from just the basic meters. And this is why you need to go into vectoral calculations in that case.